Uh, welcome to the week 5 recording for C++ programming. And you can see that week 5 goes from February 4th to February 10th. And week 5 is the Tic-Tac-Toe project. It's project 4. In week 5 you'll do watch the recording like you're doing now. You'll answer the Class Connect write-up. And you'll also do an assignment called My Finishing Plan. So let me show you that. I'm going to go ahead and move down here to week four, or project four, I mean. And here's my finishing plan. And you can see my finishing plan is pretty basic. All you do is you highlight all this stuff, paste it into the drop box, and you answer these. Like, what is your current grade percentage? So go to the grade book. You should see your grade percentage. How many points have you earned? You should see that in the grade book. What grade percentage do you want overall? Do you want 80%, 85%? Put that percent down, just the percent, please. Then you need to go look at the syllabus and look at the grade part of the bottom of the syllabus and um, figure out how many total points you need to get the grade you want. Of course, it's also pretty easy to figure out because we have a thousand points in the class. If you want 80 percent, then that means 800 points. Pretty easy. Then you need to figure out on number four how many more points past what you currently have do you need to get to the total points that you want. So a little bit of subtraction there, you'll figure it out. And you can see the rest of this. So that's an easy 50 point assignment and it's, you do that in the Dropbox. And that's called my finishing plan and that'll give you and me both an idea of what you plan to do for the rest of the course. Now I also have set up a passing plan. So you can go look at this passing plan and this shows you, whoops, I need to get that reloaded, I guess. That passing plan will show you the minimum work for you to do to pass the class. You'd end up getting about 595 points if you did that work. But I'll get that reposted. Okay, the work for this week, again, getting in here. We're doing a tic-tac-toe game. All of you have probably played tic-tac-toe before. So you're going to go through seven labs to create the tic-tac-toe game. Then you'll do the quiz, and then you'll do assignment four, which is making some changes in the tic-tac-toe game. And as always, well, let me I mention one more thing before you move on. Here I have a list of all the programs you need to be need to do. These are this is everything that's assigned in the class, and what needs to be submitted. Some students have been having trouble figuring out what they're supposed to submit. But this is everything, so this is if you're going to do all the work. But some of you might do the passing plan and just do some of the work. All right. So let's jump in here into Project 4. And here we are. In Project 4, you'll see when the screen comes up that this is going to be a tic-tac-toe game. And this tic-tac-toe game, if you follow directions completely exactly, you'll see that it will ask for the player one to put the name in, player two to put her name in, and then it'll draw a board on the screen, and then it'll tell the player that it's their turn, and then the player chooses which of these cells, which of these boxes by the number do they want their mark to go in. So you can see in this one, Joe chose the number four, so then an X goes in the spot in the middle and they keep playing the game. So you're going to write a program that will do that. You can see that program, you're going to create a console project. You're going to use the character and string variables, so different types of variables. You're going to use what's called an array, which is like a table of, of numbers that you can use. So you can see lots of different things you're doing in here. And this is going to be different. It's going to be new from the previous work you've been doing. So again, here's the sample of the project. And here's how tic-tac-toe is played. All of you have hopefully played tic-tac-toe before. And here's the project plan. You can see that this is a pretty extensive flowchart that you know, starts right here, get the names of the players. Has anybody won yet? Well, no, they haven't. Have the players taken a total of nine moves yet? No. Then it uh, moves down here, shows the board. Is it players one turn? Yes. Then it goes this way, player one makes a move and just move along with uh, doing this. So this flowchart is pretty intensive, but it does give you an idea of how a, how a flowchart can work and how this program works. Okay, moving along. Just like always, 
If you follow the lab directions exactly, you'll get things done right. So this is going to have you open up C++. By now you should know how to open that. In this one, you're going to do something different. You're going to create a new project. In previous projects, the, the projects were already set up for you, the folders and everything. This one, you're going to do something new. I think you might already have the tic-tac-toe folder. Then you're going to put your work into that folder. So just follow the directions. So you have A++ is open. And then you go to New. And then you choose Project. Then you go down into... Um, once you're in the project, then Win32, and you just keep going along and doing this. Now, one thing I know some students have not been doing, if you go down here under Watch the Demonstration, this will show a video of somebody doing the exact work. So this could possibly help you rather than just those screenshots. So I'm going to close that, but this shows exactly what work you need to do. And, of course, you save it into your profiles, your username, your C++, same place where you've been saving all of your work, right? Change names. But please, follow these directions exactly. I, I know it sounds like I'm whining about it, but where students are having issues is because they're, they're jumping over directions, thinking they know what to do, and then it does not work right. So you must follow the directions. So you get that set up to where you can start doing the program. Now once you have that those folders and everything set up, then you're going to create the C++ file. So again, you just follow the directions. Go into source file, C++ file, change the name of it, and you create that C++ file, the CPP file. Now you need to set up the CPP file, and as you should know by now, you have particular lines, so you have your comment lines, those aren't required, but you have other lines like the IO stream line, the standard namespace line, and the void main. Remember, those are the three main lines that you have in programming. You have to have that. And then you go ahead and put in an opening bracket and a closing bracket. Now that reminds me to take a look at the Class Connect write-up. So let's see what our questions are. What are the three required lines? Oh, we just answered those, didn't we? Then how is the character variable different from other variables? How is that array useful? So I need to remember those things. So those are the three lines you, you create. And when you get down to the bottom, this is what you should look like, exactly like this. If it doesn't, then fix it now. Now, a character variable, C-H-A-R, can store only one character of information. It can store one digit like the number five. It can store one letter like the letter A or the you know, a small case letter. It cannot store negative, cannot store more than one uh, decimal place or, or more than one uh, number space or a word. So that's how, how the character variable is different from other variables. So which of the following would be stored in a character variable? Well, probably the letter E, right? So now you need to declare the character variable, just like other work you've done where you've declared variables. So we're going to put a note in here, right, of what we're doing. And now right here, we're putting in the character variable, and where character variable is going to be called the word board. So we have the comments, and then we declare it. And you can see it's inside those brackets at the bottom of your program. So yours should be working exactly like that. Now talking about brackets, until now we've used the curly brackets, and we're going to start using the square brackets. You have to make sure you use the right brackets or your program won't work properly. Yeah, an array. An array is useful because it can store more many values in one variable. So you can see right here, with this array, we're creating a board of nine spots right here. And these are the nine spots. And it's first and 
this variable in this array can store these nine different numbers. So that's what a, an array, where an array is useful. An array is useful because it can store many values in one variable. That's how it's useful. Now declaring this, again, this is how you have to declare the character. And again, our, our character uh, variable is the word board, and it's going to be an array of nine spots. So that's what we're creating, an array of nine spots. Now if I go back to the class connect write up, it said right here, how's an array useful in programming? We covered that already. And then right here it says, how would you declare an array with seven spots? So pay attention to that. So here you're going to declare an array of nine spots. So we're going to find that line that we created, character board, semicolon. Click between the word board and the semicolon, and you type bracket, nine, closing bracket. So look at yours right now. Your program should look exactly like this. If anything's wrong, fix it now. Numbering an array. So because of the way we want to number ours, we want it to go exactly like this then we need to make sure that our array is set up properly. So when you assign a value to an array, the computer needs to know what spot to put the value in. So that's why you have to have all these board commands in as part of this array. So it tells it exactly where to put it. So now we're putting values in the array. So right down here, you're going below where you have declared the array. We declared it there to be an array of nine boxes, nine spots. Now we're putting in a comment. Now we're going to go ahead and put in all the spots for this the array. So there's the board zero. And what they have you do, they have you put board zero once. And then you copy and paste it nine times so you have it like this so it makes it a lot easier. You don't have to type it every time. And then you just go down and you fix every line. So you can see there's the number one is fixed. There's the number two is fixed. Three, four, five, all the way down. So again, yours should look exactly like this. Pay attention to the, bracket, the uh, semicolon and the quotes that are around everything and the brackets. Check your work, make sure it looks exactly like this. And you're not going to debug yet because you'll just get errors. So that's lab one. Now let's move into lab two. Now lab two is to do more work on this, obviously. So let's jump into lab two. In lab two, you're going to open up the tic-tac-toe project, so you should know how to do that now. So you go into profiles, your name, C++, and you want to get the tic-tac-toe VC project file. You remember, you open that up once you're already in C++. Now you're going to look at functions. So a function, that's a group of statements and commands. It, programmers can organize their code better. So if I go back to the class connect write-up, it says, once a function is written, how is it useful? So once a function is written, it can be used again and again without writing out the code each time. So that's why how a function is useful. Once it's written, it can be used again and again without having to write the code each time. Now you have to declare functions. And you can see right here how they're declaring, the, declaring this function. So they're going to show you how to do that, but just, just remember, you need to make sure you have the brackets properly and all that. So now we're going to declare a function in the program we're working on. So the first thing we do, right in this exact spot where theirs is, you're going to put a comment to declare a function. And under that, you're going to put the void show board. So you need to do that with the proper brackets. Now we need to write a function. And here's an example of, of uh, 
the function has to have the correct brackets on it. So we're going to write the show board function. So we're right here with this command. And we just move down below and put a bracket in. Enter twice just like it says. And in between all that, we put board 0, board 1, just like this. So we're just doing different parts of it at a time. So you do this exact command that they have. And make sure you have end L at the end of it. And remember, C-O-U-T means print out. Now we have to do a call function that tells the computer to run something within that's part of the function. So again, following the directions, Add two empty lines after board 8 equals 8. So right in here we had two empty lines. And then we're going to put a command in or a, um, a comment in there. And then we're going to put the show board. So this is all we're doing right here. Pretty easy if you follow directions. The local variable can be used only by the function it's in. So now we're going to create a, a different type of a variable that has to go within a function. We also use what's called a global variable. So these are new terms that, that you're going to, going to be learning. So global variable we're going to create. So under the namespace line, which is right here, then we put the comment declare global variables right there. Then we put an empty line under that. Click and drag to select the character board 9. And then you move it up here. You drag it up to there. So we took it from down here and we moved it up to there. Check your work. So just go look right down this list and make sure your work is exactly like that. And of course, you want to save your work as you're going along. Now we need to space out our numbers so that our, so our table looks right. And what we're going to use is this symbol right here. And this symbol is used on your keyboard above the Enter key. So I'm looking at my keyboard, and it's Shift, and then the key right above my keyboard. It's on the, the same key as the backslash. So hopefully you're going to find it. In this picture they have right here, this isn't right. It says it looks like two vertical dashes. It might, but mine looks just like this, almost like a big um, letter L. So the steps to do that, so just after board, right here where they are, then you're going to type in that spacing command. So see that spacing command, what that says is to write down this space holder. And you'll see what it's doing. This is going to write the lines on the board on the play board. So check all your coding, make sure everything is accurate. Then you're going to finish the show board function. So you're going to copy that code you just, uh, that you had, some code you had previously. Then you're going to paste it down below. So you can see what you're doing here. You're creating multiple ones because that's going to draw the board for you. Edit the code so it prints out board 3, board 4, board 5, then board 6, 7, and 8. So this is creating the play board. But not only do we write the vertical lines, but we have to put the horizontal lines too. So see how you put the horizontal lines with the count command. So you're going to put in a couple of horizontal lines. So this is all you should have.
So go down in this list right here, and this should show you this is exactly what yours should look like, just like this. Okay, lab three. Let's see if we have anything for the class connect write up here. Lab three, what do string variables store? What is the use of the else statement? So we open up tic-tac-toe, by now you should know how to open that. And a string stores a line of text. So a string variable stores a line of text. So it can be one word, it can be a sentence, but that's what a string, and it always has double quotation marks to have a string. So now you're going to include the string library. So this is different. Before we only had the IO stream. Now we're going to have a string library. So you put that in. Then we're going to declare a couple of string variables. And of course, these string variables, these are going to be the player names. So see where they're doing that? We're declaring some local variables. We're doing player one and player two. So right below the void main, right in this section. And then we also, then once we get the players' names, we have to store the players' names. So here is where it is asking for the player to enter their name. And then you're going to put a send command, because remember this count command that asks for the player's name, and then the send command is the actual input that the person puts in. So I would put the name Ron, and it would show up right there for player one name. Then we can copy those commands and paste them down below and then change the numbers, the ones to twos. So now we did right here, we just collected the player's names for the people who are playing the game. So as usual, right here, this is the work that we just did. Or, or no, actually that was right down here, where we got the players' names. That was this work. So make sure yours looks just like that. Commenting at the end of the line. So you can put comments. Previously we've just put comments above the lines. We can put comments at the end of the lines also. So what part of the code will the computer run? He's going to run that part of the code, right? It will not run the comment. So now I have to declare two integer variables. So under string two player name, type integer whose turn equals one. So integer whose turn equals one. And then we put a comment to help remember what that variable means. So you can see the different work that we did here. And we put in the move. So it stores where the player um, wants to move. So make sure your lines are just like those. Now get to the else statement. The else statement tells the computer what to do if the if statement doesn't run. So if the computer, the computer wants to do something when it sees an if command, but if the if command is not right, then it's going to go to the elf, else. So this says if this thing equals 1, then it's going to do something. If it's not equals 1, then it's going to do something else. So that's how the if statement works right there. So in the following example, what code will run if this thing equals 2? Select the best answer. So if this thing equals 1, move equals 2, else move equals 1. So which is it going to run? But up here it says this thing equals 2, so that means this thing does not equal 1. So then it's going to do, I think it's going to do move 1. Okay. 
and did move one because this thing right here, this thing equaled two instead of equaling one. So that's how if then else works. So inserting an else statement. So writing your program right here, tell which players to move. Then we have a whose turn, the player number one's turn. Press enter twice, put in the bracket. Then we do the else. So if it's not the player one turn, then it's going to go down and it's going to say player two if it has to. So this one, you're going to put a variety of commands in here, and these commands right here tells which player is going to do the moving, whose turn it is, I, I should say, not move, but whose turn it is. And it has to store the move, because what it does, it stores the move, and then it counts them up, because there are only nine moves in a game, right? So it stores the move. So this is where it's going to start storing the moves, and you'll see you're putting a, the count, and a send command in there. So going down this, yours should look just like this. So all the moves are there. The count commands are all there. And here's what we just did. All the players, whose turn it is, and all of that. It's done right in there. Okay, lab four. Let's go to the class connect write up. And in lab three, what did we have? We talked about string and else. Good. So in lab four, what is the purpose of the switch case and the break command? Okay, so now lab four. Open up tic tac toe project. You should know how to do that now. And in lab four, switch case decides what to do based on the value of a variable. So if a variable is a certain value, one thing is done. If it's another value, something else is done. So you can see the um, down here, if apples equals zero, the computer will run a certain code. If apples equal one, the computer runs another code. If apples equals two, the computer runs another code. So we need to have the switch command in here. So the switch case. So we'll go right down here underneath our, some of our previous work. So you want to find where sin move is, and you put that command is change whose turn it is. And we have to do the switch. So we're going to switch on whose turn. Put the proper brackets in, and then case one. Put brackets again. Case two, more brackets in, and then more of the whose turn work. So you can see all this work that's being done at once right here. So you've done all of this work, making sure you have the right curly brackets, the correct curly brackets. And if in doubt, you can always watch the demonstration. This shows somebody doing this exactly when they were creating their program. And computers, they want to run the code in order. So that's why you have to put these different um, switch case statements in so things will run out of order. Now right now, as this says, the computer will think it's player one's turn, but we're going to fix this. And we use the break command. The break command tells the computer to stop running code inside the current statement. So that's when we put the break command in here. It's going to stop doing that and it'll stop um, doing the automatic running through the code automatically. So we have to add that break command in. So you can see where they're adding the break command in right underneath whose turn equals two. And make sure you have the semicolon at the end of it. Now we're updating the, the playing board. So right now your program will change whose turn it is, but it still needs to mark an X or an O. Complete these steps below to put the X or the O in. So what we do right here, so after the bracket of uh, 
in case statement, add a line and type board move equals X. So you can see board move equals X. Then down here, board move equals zero. So this means that for player number one, an X will be put in wherever they make a move. And for player number two, an O will be put in whenever they make a move. So remember to use the letter X and the letter O, not numbers. Not the number zero. It has to be the letter O. You can do capital O and capital X if you want to. Okay, now we want to show the board on the screen. So the show the board, and here's the show the board command. Check your work. So as always, scroll down here. Make sure you see yours shows exactly what you just practiced, exactly what you just did. Show whose turn it is, show board, etc. Because it's going to show board multiple times. Okay, that's lab four. Now we're getting into lab five. Let's go look at the write up. Okay, in lab five, what are the limits to the bool variable? Okay, now lab five, we're going to probably go through this a little bit faster. So in lab five, you're going to open your program as always. And bool variable can only have two values, true or false. That's the limits to the bool variable. And it actually stands for Boolean, which means yes or no. So um, true, false is all you can have with bool. So we're working with functions again. And functions that have any kind of values in their variables. Float, int, string, bool, whatever. So we're going to do a bool. Now, a little bit more about declaring functions. Um, you know, you really don't have to understand what all this is saying. Just follow the directions on this, and you'll see what it does when you run the program. So we need to put this command in. Move, move is valid is what this means, because this is cha you know if the move is valid. It only wants to take the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, or 8. And if somebody typed in a 9, then it's going to say that's an invalid move. So this means move, move is valid. So you put that command in there. So is it valid? True. If it's valid, false, then it'll do something else. Now you need to put the function in for all that. So you're just going right down to the bottom, and you're putting these commands in exactly where... This is showing on the screen. You do this work on your own exactly in the program you're writing. So all of that work you just did. Return command. So you have to have that in. So return true, else you're going to return the word false. Of course, you won't see the word true or false, but it will tell the computer to do something else if there's a true or a false. So there's the return true, there's the return false, where those go in. The plus plus is called ampersand. So ampersand is a conditional operator. It checks two conditions. So it's going to check does something equal something else, essentially. So to do that operator, go right here underneath uh, move is valid, the boolean, the bool activity we put in before, and we're going to put these lines in, put those lines exactly where you're told to put them. So that's what yours should look like. Now we've used a bunch of variables, like this says the move is valid, uses two variables, has a variable called board and a variable called move, and it talks about being global and local and, and all of that. Now we also use what are called pass variables, where the function can do certain things. Um, I don't know that we need, really need to know exactly what those things do, but we do want to you know, see how they work within our program. So we're going to declare a pass variable. Okay, 
So now the move is valid that we declared earlier. We're going to change that slightly. So move is valid. So we went to that line and we put in integer m. That's a pass variable. So now we're going to go ahead and add that pass variable. So follow these directions. The int m you're going to put in. Inside the move is valid. You're going to make some changes right in here. So you see the changes that they made with that. Here's what it was. See, it was the word move, the word move. But now it's just going to be the letter M, small letter M in brackets. So your code needs to look exactly like this. Do while. So do while, it will run the code at least once, and then it will check the condition. So it first runs the code, then it checks for whether it's true or false, or whatever the condition is. So we have to put a loop in here to make things happen again. So find where the player2 name is asked for. You're going to add two lines after that, and you're going to put in this comment line. Then you're going to put the do command, bracket, then a move. And then move we we so we put that bracket up there. Then we go down to the the other send move command, and we put in the move is valid. So what this means is that it's going to run something. The do command up above is going to run that while the valid move is true. And you can go in, and they want you to increase the indentation on some of this just to make it look better. Hit okay, pass variable, we talked about that before. So now you want to make sure that yours looks exactly like this. Make it look exactly like that. Okay. Let's go back to that class connect write up. I think I did. Yeah, we talked about bool. Okay, good. So now we're moving into lab six. So hang in there. Lab six will go pretty quickly. So open up the program, obviously, like you've done before. Now we're going to put in a, a who won function. Is anybody won yet? Yes or no? No, then you keep playing. If it's yes, then you declare the winner. So you have to put that in there to where it will keep running until the game is over. So you're going to find the bool move is valid int m. You're going to find that command first. Then under it, you're going to put integer who won and add a comment at the end of it. And you'll see that comment is going to be like this. Return 0 if no one has won, 1 if player 1 has won, and 2 if player 2 has won. So that's the whole comment you'll put in, not just this little bit right here. Now writing the whole function for that. So after the very last bracket in your program, at the very last closing bracket, add two lines and type integer who won. So you go to the bottom of your program and do this. Use the, um, they add curly brackets to the bottom of it. And then you put the if board commands in there. And more bracketing. And return zero. So deciding who won. So now the game has to figure out. So we have to put coding in so the game will figure out when three of the same um, Alphabetic figures are right in a row. So the game needs to figure that out. So we're down to our who won statement, which was down at the bottom of our program. We're messing with that. So you're going to type if board equals x, if board 0 equals x, then curly brackets, then we're going to return 1, 
else, then you have curly brackets, you're going to return 2. So if board 0 equals 1, and board whatever the, I don't remember whatever command we had out here, but this is setting up the game to figure out the program right now. If there are three X's in a row at the top, three X's in a row at the top, or if neither player has one. So now we're in the point of getting this figured out that if there are three X's in a, X's in a row, then the computer will do certain things. So find the sin player to name, add two lines underneath it just like this, and type while one equals zero, while who one equals zero. Then you put an opening bracket, then you go down you put a curly bracket, a closing bracket. So again, you're doing an opening bracket up here, and then a closing bracket further down. And you can indent your code to stay organized. Okay, getting to our program. Here's what you should have. Now this says that at this point you can go ahead and debug. I don't remember if it said that before. But see, and see what it does. Maybe it did have you do that before. So make sure everything is proper. If else, we've used like if else a couple of different ways. So now we're going to put another if else command in here. And then this is actually an else if, which is a little bit different, isn't it? So find the last closing bracket in the main function comes after the show board command and just before the void show board. So come right in here and put your if one statement, your if who one statement in, curly brackets, and you're going to put another calc command, add another who one, an else if statement for who one, add some more brackets, another calc command. So you can see what these lines would do. It'll either print that player one, it'll print like Joe has one, or Susie has one. It was ever's named were in those variables we set earlier. Follow through this, make sure everything works right. Make sure all your code is correct. Now there are eight ways to win. These are all the ways that tic-tac-toe can be won. It has to be programmed in. So you need to find the who one function. So find this line right in here. You're going to copy everything in this function except for the, the line return zero. So see how this copied all of this from if down to that ending bracket. So we have that here. And then we're going to go So right here, because you return to, and it's just right above return zero, paste it just above the line return zero. So you're really kind of duplicating this above the line return zero. In the code, you pasted it in the line if board zero equals um, Board 1 and board 1 equals board 2, change the numbers to if board 3 equals board 4 and board 4 equals board 5. So this is getting pretty intricate, getting these things done. But just make sure the coding is, is right. And if you have a doubt with it, always watch the demonstration. And this shows you somebody actually doing this work. So you can see how they're highlighting all of that information. Control C, and they click right above return zero and they paste it in there. Check your work. So scrolling down, again, check everything that you just did. Check for brackets, all of that. 
And remember, whenever you run these, if it says build is out of date, then you just go ahead and hit build again or rebuild. Please search below to add code that checks to see if someone got all three spots. You press control V to paste another section of code just above the return zero. So this is the code that you did previously. So you're doing the same returns, the same uh, coding, and you're going to put the, um, the 6, 7, and 8 in there. So remember, now you're going to have... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, or 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 on all of these lines. And you have to change the if command to the 6. So check your code for all of that. So you should find your 1, 2, your 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So I'm going to just move down here, and this is what we just did. Just did these lines right in here. Actually, did these lines right down in here, the 6, 7, 8. So those were the ways to win across. Now we have to do the ways to win side by side. So we're going to do the press put that code in again. This is going to test straight up and down 0 3 6 1 4 7 and 2 5 8. So there's a 0 3 6 put that in. So you'll change it to the 0 3 6 then you paste another section of code and change that to the 1 4 7 So now we're doing all the spots that go up and down. So as a reminder, watch the demonstration. It'll show you exactly how to do it. Check all of your work. So you can try to re um, debug and build. Now we have to figure out diagonally from 0 down to 8 and from 3 down to the left to 6. So you're putting another one of these commands in. And this one's going to be in this one, 0, 4, 8 you're going to check to check diagonal if things are all the, if somebody won. And this one's going to check 2, 4, 6 if somebody won. Check all of your steps, all of your commands. It's amazing when you think about it, what the computer has to go through to get all this stuff done properly, isn't it? All the decisions that have that it has to make. So we're just about finished. So lab seven. Of course, there are no class connect questions in lab six or seven. And now you can also have a tie game. That's when the spots are all, um, or, or nobody has three in a row. So a tie game it has to figure it out somehow. And what it does in a tie game, it'll do after it gets to nine moves. And if nobody has won, then it says, well, it must be a tie. See right here? If the players have made nine moves and it doesn't detect a winner, then it must be a tie. So you really don't have to tell it what a tie is. It will know what a tie is just because there is no winner before nine moves. So we're going to declare a variable. So go to this place where you declared local variables. And you're going to declare an int total moves variable. Right there. And you're going to initialize that to zero. So it's going to start off when the game starts, it's going to start off as zero total moves. And each time it runs through and somebody makes a move, then it's going to do the while loop to add one more. So you can see right here, while who won equals zero, 
and it's going to change to move equal 9, less than 9. So what this means is that it will run through it while who 1 equals 0, and it has not equaled 9 yet. So be, well, so go through 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this command right here, this counts the number of moves. Now here we have to add numbers of moves to it. So the value of total moves would be 5 because we have 4 plus this adds one more to it. So if we look at this, we have 0 and there's 1, 2, 3, right? Let's see if I got that correct. Good job. So it starts at 0 and then it adds 1, 2, 3. So we're going to add that in so the counter will move up 1 each time. So the while move is valid, so we need to find that line, then under it, type in a, a um, comment, add one to the total moves, and right here we add one to the total moves. So you see that? So when it runs through this thing, total moves equals zero, then it comes through here and it hits that and it says, okay, now total moves equals one, then total moves equals two, all the way up to total moves equals nine which means that the game should be over. So find now in this one, find your else statement. Then under the brackets, right under here, in the closing bracket for the else, you're going to type the word else. Then you're going to put some more brackets, and you're going to put a count command. It is a tie game. So again, if it goes through nine moves and nobody has one, then it's going to say it's a tie game. It'll print that for you. System pause, you want to do that, obviously, so it will pause at the end, so you can see the scores, or see who won, see if it's a tie, whatever. Check all of your code, so debug, check your code. On the desktop, open the computer, so of course what you've done, once you debugged it, then you go in and you look at the debug folder in the tic-tac-toe folder that you save and run the exe to see if your program runs properly. Now one thing you can do if you want to play with this a little bit, you can go in like where you put the little o and the little x for the numbers that go in the spaces and the people make their moves and you can change those to different letters. You can change it to r and z if you want to and then r and z will print. But wherever you have the little x and the little o in your program, you have to make sure you put the r and the z in or whatever. So if you want to you know, put something different than x's and o's, you can do that. So that is this pro project. And you, you've done your Class Connect write-up and all that. So that's this project. So you're able to get that done. And then the addition to this project, the assignment, the challenge, is that you want to try to make it so the computer is the um, second player. So it says right here, create a random number between 0 and 8 and store it in a move when it's the computer's turn. So we just go right down here to assignment 4. In assignment 4, of course, it says you've created the tic-tac-toe program. You've run the program, you've made it work, and all of that. Then you go, you know, to go in there and change the name of of the new folder. So you're going to make a new folder, and you call it Computer Tic Tac Toe. So you're making a new folder. So you have your Tic Tac Toe folder in there. You right click, copy, then you go to a blank space and you hit paste, and you rename it Computer Tic-Tac-Toe. And then here, you're going to open up in the Computer Tic-Tac-Toe folder, the Tic-Tac-Toe VC project, rebuild solution and all that. And in this one, you're going to create a program that instead of player two getting a chance to enter in the move, the computer will put an O and act as player two. So think about how you might do that. And then, of course, the grading, and it tells you a little bit, create a random number. We learned about random numbers in the last program. 
So see if you can get that to run. Now the other thing about this, I re I'm going to change the grading for the class because originally I took like this one was worth 35 plus 10 45. Originally I split each of these in half like this would have been worth 22 and a half and the other one was 22 and a half. But I'm going to change it to where the main one you do as you watch the lab is worth uh, two thirds and then the other one is going to be worth uh, one third. So that will actually increase your grades if you do the projects, but not the assignments. But anyway, that's the work for this one. I know that was a long uh, presentation to watch. But again, if you put in five hours a week in this class, so right now you put in about 50 minutes watching this and doing the Class Connect write-up. Now you go in on your own and you go through the project and you do those steps that would take you another hour that's two hours and then you might spend an hour trying to get it to where to do the assignment for to where you can make the pro the computer be player number two so that might be another hour so that's three hours total for this class that's not not near the five is it okay that's all i have for you so i look forward to your work coming in bye